What's happening, people? It's the homie Smith the 400 coming at you straight off the AV. And this is Mr. Reacts. Shout out and salute to all the subscribers, wherever you at all over the world. You know what I'm saying? And if you made it to this video, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. New content daily. And look, we got the the live streams haven't been as consistent, we must admit. But life been life and bro. My team been going through some things and like, you feel me? I gotta make sure I hold it down in the time being. So, you know, it's always Mr. Reacts. I started uh just my thoughts, you feel me, to give a little, you know, that's gonna be dope. Just wait for how we work that out. But yeah, man, with this video right here, man, this is Mr. Reacts. I'm reacting to Ed Lover saying that uh Tupac was mad that Biggie stole his baby baby ad lib. You feel what I'm saying? And it was also said that not only did he steal the ad lib, Excuse me. But he also stole the whole mafia swing, the whole dime thing, the wearing the suits, the wearing the hats. We know how Pac was rolling. So without further ado, man, shout out Art of Dialogue. We finna bring this thing to the stage. Shout out Ed Lover, the legendary Ed Lover. Come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, son. Son. Come on, son. <laughs> the legendary Ed Lover. Come on, son. <laughs> we out here, man. Let's get it. Shout out to both of them, bro. Stretch. If I'm not mistaken, you helped him get his first record deal, right? Yeah, with Tommy Boy Records. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Stretch Stretch was from the hood. He was from the neighborhood. I see him around a lot. And the guys that actually were the show boys who did the record drag rap, which became the record responsible for the whole bounce sound out in, in New Orleans. You can ask Manny Fresh or any of them. They used to play that drag rap record by the show boys. Um, Orville and his partner, they are the ones that Stretch first started recording with because they wanted to record. And then when things didn't work out with them, they bought me a demo tape of their stuff, the Live Squad stuff, which was Stretch's brother Madge, and Kalo the DJ, and we kind of like, you know, started working together. I believed in them. I, I, I thought they had something. I thought they were really dope. And we kind of, you know, I let Latifah hear it. And then Latifah set up the meeting with Tommy Boy, and then Tommy Boy signed them. And I was executive producer on their project. If I'm not mistaken, he did production for Pac, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Him and his brother, him and Madge, they, they would produce a lot of songs once they got to know each other very well and, and stretch really kind of after they were a self-produced group pretty much live squad was um they knew what the beats that they wanted to use they knew you know they learned all the tricks of the trade in the studio he started producing records for Pac, so he started producing a lot of stuff for Pac and working with Pac on different music and this is all before death row way before death row yeah, yeah, he did some good work for Pac, man. How did Big come in the picture? I'm not, I can't even tell you how Pac and Big met. But I know that a lot of times when Pac would come to New York City, and sometimes if I was around at the time, Stretch had an MPV, and he would be like, yo, Pac just landed. I'm getting ready to go get him. And I'd be like, bet, I'll jump in, and we'll roll. And we roll, and we go pick Pac up from the airport. And he'd be like, yo, we get to Pac, they start smoking. He'd be like, Yo, where big at? Somebody hit big and see if we can find out where big at. And they would hit big or they would hit C's and they would page them back and they'd be in Brooklyn, man. And he just always wanted to go and hang out with big. And they always like to hang out together, man. They had this thing about them where they where it was a mutual respect. I was finna say, like, he must have had a mutual respect for, for uh big because for him to pull up to NY and be like, every time he pull up, he pull up to to big his people's. First of all, he was respect them he trusts them he feels like when he's in ny he's good with them which probably is why when things went left as far as his shooting in quiet studios he felt like you know with biggie and them being upstairs they might have had a you know what i'm saying you see how things could kind of line up and then you know like you from ny you should know these people this that a third but like legend has it Pac was dealing with some very serious uh characters and anybody from the hood know it's certain people in the in the in the hood that you don't 
cross. You feel what I'm saying? And legend has it he crossed the people, but let's continue. From a street perspective and from a rap perspective. There's a mutual respect between them two dudes. Yeah, I know when I spoke to Majesty, he was telling me how Pac was mad at Big for taking this ad lib. You personally, do you feel like Big was taken from Pac or no? Yeah, I would say there was a, I would say, yeah. Absolutely. I'd say Big had had Pac had some influence on Big. I would say there's a lot of people that had influence on Big. I think Big plucked from the best of the best. You know what I mean? I think if you listen to some of Big's records, when you hear Big do that double voice on a record where he's he's him and his partner are gonna do all of this robbing and stealing, that influence came from Slick Rick doing the two voices. So I think I think, you know, Pac's influence on Big because they freestyled together a lot and rhymed together a lot. That was an influence on him. And I also think Slick Rick and other people were influenced on him. I think every MC is influenced by, by somebody. Facts. Yeah, that's a fact. Because he was telling me that, you know, Big, he got that baby, baby. He got that from Pac. So. Listen, and that's not far-fetched, but it's facts that every MC is inspired by somebody. Every artist Let's just say every artist, it don't even got to be rap. We're inspired by somebody. We heard something that we're like, yo, we want something like that. Or we were inspired growing up listening to a certain artist or two or three, you feel me, that may have been the core or part of the core pieces of our overall development as an artist or our sound. You feel what I'm saying? So I definitely understand what he's saying about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He was saying, yeah. Yeah, he was a little upset about that because, you know, that baby and all that, that was Pac's thing. You know what I mean? So when Big did it, I think Pac felt a little certain way about that. And think about that because Pac used to be like, hun the with the dude. Hun the hun the Like, baby, baby. Hun the Like, I can, I can see it, bro. It's all the way down to the Don ish with the suits and the hats. Like, straight Pac. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. I've heard him voice that before. Tell me about this. So you was around when Pac spoke on that? Yeah, he was a little upset about that, but it was big. And he, and he wasn't, he wasn't like salty, salty about it. You know what I mean? I think that all came out later on once they, once they started beefing. But at the time they were still friends and big blew up. And when big blew up, Pac was very happy for him. He was very happy for big success. At that time, this is before the wedge that was unmovable wedge between them came. So it was like, it was just like, oh, okay, I see that. You know, you put that in the back of your brain, like I've done this and I've seen somebody else do it. I give you a classic example. It's almost like when I was on your TV raps and T Money came up with the Ed Lover dance, right? Then you had your man that was the mayor on Rap City. Then he invented a dance after my dance. It's something that you put in the back of your head. But you ain't going to say nothing about it unless y'all got beef. And as long as y'all ain't got beef, it's going to always be in the back of your head like, all right, I see you chipping off a little bit of my style. And that happens on all types of walks of life because I didn't have people. I do a clothing line. You want to do a clothing line. And I've been doing the ish since whenever. But you just popped in. You might not know about the history or I, you know. I do this, you want to do that. It's always a monkey see, monkey do as <laughs> Negro in the hood, you feel me? It wasn't something that he was running around like, yo, dude is biting on me. I don't want to talk to him no more. It, it wasn't like that, bro. It wasn't. I'm pretty sure it was like, but pay homage, though. Like, recognize why you say that the way you say that is because of me. Cause I definitely be feeling that way. Like recognize the way you move, the way like the reason you move the way you move is because of me. The reason you chose to step out and do that particular venture is because you saw me do that particular venture. You feel me? And sometimes it becomes too obvious. Like they might have your style, like you were saying with the baby baby. Or it could be it could be subtle. You feel what I'm saying? They could probably Try to use one of your plugs behind the scenes or some shit. You know what I mean? It just, it just be little ish. And I've definitely been there on several, you know, ventures and things that I've done. I've saw people nitpick and steal from what the F I was doing without really giving them up no props. For real. Something like that. 
Do you recall exactly what Pac said? I, I think I, I remember one time we were all around. We were probably around, probably around Springfield. And um, I think Pop, Big Papa came on. And everybody was smoking. You know, we had went to the Ave or something. And some sh- we was just chilling. And, you know, Big was like the baby, baby. And Pac was like, y'all hear this thing? Yo, ah, okay. Okay, I see you, Big. Gonna take a little bit of my style. And it was, that was it. It wasn't like he stormed off mad. It was like in a joking manner, keep the weed moving around. It wasn't nothing to it. It all came out like to a head once he was upset. Yeah, man. You already know, man. The homie Pac definitely was an inspiration to Biggie when it came to, like I said, like the player suits and the player things. Like, think about Pac, bro. Think about Pac and Snoop sitting there, dog father era, <laughs> suits on, top hats, looking real mafioso. That was something that Puffy started wearing his little hats and doing the mafioso. Biggie, 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 can't you see? The hypnotized video, bro. Go peep it. Like, they're they trying to do the little Versace and Italian things because Pac was the star before Biggie, bro. Pac was the star before Biggie that had the Versace. And you, you see how cool he looked in the shirts? Silk shirts just... Could you imagine a silk shirt? Like, flat out. Could you imagine a silk shirt in the summer? Would it be sweaty or would it just be airy and real you know real real nice i don't know i might have to try that silk shirt in the summer type vibe but uh yeah man he totally took the whole vibe bro Pac said that you wasn't on your player player ish you stole that from me so that definitely was one of them things that he definitely was not really feeling you know what i'm saying and the baby baby had lived that had to be one of you know plenty uh disgruntled feelings that he had towards Biggie, bro. It's messed up though. They was both legends. They was both nice. They would have been way cooler and way doper together, but in a wild way, and I ain't even gonna say that. I'm gonna keep that to myself. But if you made it to this point in the video, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. Because, you know, you see similarities between yourself and your counterparts around you and it's like that. Like, Doug from Brooklyn. And me and him are very much, like, I'm a very pockish type individual. And Dove is a very biggie type individual. And I could definitely see how, if we was on the opposite sides of the spectrum, the war would be warring and sh- would get real. <laughs> God forbid, but that's how that is. That's the type of like, cause it's like you was homies, bro. That's like when homies, it don't matter like when homies separate, it don't matter what that's like, come on, because y'all got too much rapport, it's too much, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, if it wasn't for certain people around y'all, it could work. That's why me and mine and don't be falling out like that, bro. Cause I'll be one to hit cats in the in the group chat and make it known. I'll be one to hit cats. <laughs> personally and make it known like yo i feel like this this is how i feel how do you feel and just leave it what it is because i've learned like i'm a, I'm a i'm a wise one i i kind of learn from the mistakes of others so then let this be a lesson Pac and biggie if they was alive right now think about where hip-hop would be that's why i'm thankful for kendrick lamar restoring the feeling Again, if you made it to this point in the video, go ahead, go ahead, give us a like and subscribe. Shout out to the subscribers. This has been Mr. Reacts. It's almost Mr. 400. You feel me? And um, yeah, man, I appreciate all y'all, wherever y'all at, all around the world, man. Always appreciate y'all. But yeah, man, thanks for tuning in. I'm out. Owie.